Hey everybody, we are in week five of our This Is Us series. We're talking this week about one of our everybody's. Uh, we're talking about how everybody steps here at RCC. And this is really a talk about discipleship and about how we can follow Jesus with our lives by taking steps in our faith. And this week I sat down and talked with Krista Master about, about how that plays out in her life and how she sees that playing out in a person who follows Jesus. Take a look. Hey, Chris. Hello. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank uh, you for asking me. You've been a Christian for quite a while now, uh, and I'm wondering, mm -hmm. haven't you figured it out yet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's that going for you? <laughs> the moment you think you have it figured out, <laughs> you have nothing figured out. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, we don't have it figured out, and we'll probably not ever really have it figured out. But as God's changing us and leading us, we're starting to know how to become more content in him. That's awesome. So how has that looked recently for you? Like, how, how does it look for you to become more content in him? Yeah, well, content is really, that's kind of a loaded word anyway. But being content in him is being willing to be changed by him. That's awesome. And being willing to be changed by him through circumstances that are maybe not what I expected or I predicted, and how life just seems to kind of change, and then God giving me the ability to adapt to it. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Merry Christmas. Uh, welcome to River Community Church. My name is Sam. I'm one of the pastors here. Uh, my boys and I were outside this afternoon and enjoyed the snow, and that was pretty fun. It basically feels like Christmas. Uh, if you're here for the first time or if you haven't been here for a while, what you need to know tonight is that we're in the series right now we're calling This Is Us. Uh, the title is we kind of stole from a, a series on TV uh, that talks about this, this family through the different generations. And it's a, it's a neat show. Uh, but as we talk about it, what we're really doing is taking this look at who we are as a church and, and who we've become and, and who we want to continue to be in the, in the coming years. And we've talked about a bunch of different things. We've kind of talked about it in the context of, of these everybodies. Everybody here at RCC uh, does a number of different things. So we've talked about how everybody fits here and how everybody invites here and how everybody connects and worships. And, and this week, we're going to step into how everybody steps. We're going to talk about how everybody steps here at RCC. And as we've been doing this, we've been looking back at, at a, a set of verses uh, in the book of Acts. It's in Acts chapter 2. And uh, this set of verses uh, really looks at the very first church. And so as we've been looking into it, we've been seeing just all these different ways that, that uh, these different everybodies can be seen in this very first church and, and how it plays out. So even for this one today, we talk about how they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to fellowship and to sharing meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. We also see how the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had and they sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. And we see how all the while they were praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And we see in these verses all these different ways that this very first church, even in the very beginning, from like the, the moment that this Jesus crazy thing happened with a death and resurrection, with what happened with the disciples and this beginning of a church, from the very moment it started, we see these things in this church. We see them acting a certain way. And we, we're looking at it so that we can begin to and continue to be a church that looks like that church. And Tonight, we're talking about how everybody steps. And it's interesting because last weekend, I was, uh, I was at, at a race, uh, a running race, um, and it, it was really fun. It was this awesome little event. It was a small little race uh, over at Mount Morris, like by Watoma area, the Nordic Mountains there. And so you, you parked in Nordic Mountain, and, and the race, there wasn't a lot of people there, but it, it was a really fun group, group of people. It was really well done. It was for a fun cause for after school programs or whatever. And, and it was fun. Like everybody turned out to be at this race. And what I loved about it is you kind of like ran on the roads around the hill, and then you go up over the hill and down like the ski slope to finish. And I loved it because... 
And, and this is basically the case for every race you would go to, every kind of race where there's a bunch of people trying to, to run to, to finish the race. Uh, everybody's there, and everybody got around the hill and, and over it and up and over it. But what's awesome about it is all those different people, they all ran at different paces. They all had different forms. Some of the form was kind of funny looking to me. Some of it was really great. I don't know. It was kind of fun to look at that. But one thing was the same for everyone. One thing was the same for everyone. Everyone, in trying to get around the hill and then up and over it, everyone put one foot in front of the other a whole bunch of times. And then they finished. They put one foot in front of the other a whole bunch of times in order to get around and up and over that hill. It's not a whole lot different than what we're talking about tonight. Everybody steps. Everybody's always taking steps. Everybody's taking steps in life. And that's, that's really the same way to talk about the one final thing that Jesus says to his disciples. So Jesus, in the book of Matthew, gives some direction to his, fi- his, his disciples, some last, last words to, to tell them what to do. And this is what he says. It says, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. When we talk tonight about how everybody steps, what we're really talking about is what it looks like to be a disciple of Jesus. But that brings up a good question. You've probably heard that term disciple before, right? Like you've heard it in many different contexts. And so you might wonder, like, what is a disciple anyway? What, what, what are you talking about when we talk about a disciple? Specifically, what does a disciple of Jesus look like? Because you can be a disciple of other things. But what does a disciple of Jesus look like? Is it some super holy person, like they glow when they walk into the room? Is that what it is? Do they dress a certain way? Do they wear like a certain kind of hat? Like, oh, there it is. There's the hat. They're a disciple. I mean, how do you pick one out, right? How do you pick a disciple out? And really, you can kind of hone it in on, on a few basic things, a few basic questions. When you're talking about a disciple of Jesus, you can ask yourself, what do, does a disciple of Jesus know? What do they believe? And what do they do? What do they know? What do they believe? And what do they do? A disciple of Jesus is someone who knows what Jesus accomplished on the cross and through the empty grave. They believe that what he accomplished changed both the world and changed their own life. And there's someone who then chooses to act on that by following Jesus. If you're a disciple of Jesus, you follow him because you know and you trust him. And if you're going to follow him, that means something. That means like a follower does when they're moving somewhere, they have to take steps. You have to take steps. So here at RCC, that's what we do. We're a place where everybody steps. Everybody's always taking a next step. We talk about that as our our mission here. It's everybody help everybody take the next step in developing the relationship with God. And what's great about that is it looks different for different people. Like I was at that race last weekend and everybody had a different form. Everybody had a different way of running. And so it's fun to see. Like everybody has a unique way of doing it. And this past week, actually, there's there's some news that came out. There's this really talented, really great and inspiring runner uh, who, who's been running for a while. And, and this last week, there's some special news that came out. And, and normally, it wouldn't be very special, like what, there, what happens here. Uh, but in this case, it is. And it's about um, somebody who has something special happen to them uh, because of their work and dedication. And right? that's amazing. I mean... Smart for Nike, for one. This guy's inspiring a whole bunch of people, and that's basically what professional athletes do, right? They inspire people, they make them excited, and so they want to do something similar, and I mean, you couldn't have picked a better person. And his stride looks a little different than anyone else's, but, but that didn't stop him from putting one foot in front of the other and doing it to the absolute best of his ability. Just because your steps might look different than someone else's doesn't mean you can't take one step at a time in the direction God wants you to take you. 
And it most certainly doesn't mean that that God can't do something amazing with those steps. He certainly can. God actually, he promises to help you do that. Like he promises, if you think to yourself, like I'm not sure if I can, I'm not sure if God can do much with me, he promises to help you. It says in Philippians 2.13, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and power to do what pleases him. For every one of us, our steps are gonna look different, but, but God promises to help you take those steps. Now for all of us, all of us, for all of us, life happens, right? Life happens and we get to places where maybe it's hard to do that. And so, excuse me, for, for just a second, I want you to imagine with me. Imagine that you're going to do something. Imagine for a moment uh, you are headed out west and you decide that you are going to go on an adventure. So you head out west and you go all the way out to Idaho because you think Idaho is great. And so you end up in Idaho and you find yourself there and it's kind of like wilderness in a lot of areas out in Idaho. So you find yourself really out in the wilderness and you're trying to find some really great place to go and, and adventure and you find yourself out there and, and you start following some trails and, and you head off on the on trail for a while. But then you think, you know what, this is just the same trail somebody else has taken. I'm going to go even further off, off of the beaten path. And so you go off the trail and you get into this mountainous area, and, and all of a sudden something happens where you, you trip and you fall, and you, you take a tumble. You get beat up a little bit, and, and some of your gear gets misplaced and, and whatnot, so it's not what you had originally planned. And so you get out there, and, and you see some weather coming up, so you're thinking, oh, i gotta, I got to get this set up for myself. So you grab your tent out, but it had gotten wrecked a little bit in your fall, and you're trying to set up. It's, it's not enough. And so you get a little further out and you see that the weather is going to be super severe and, and you see an outcropping. So you head over to the outcropping and, and you get into it. It's in this, in this mountainous area. And as you study it a little further, you, you find this cave and the weather is just crazy. It's torrential downpour. There's lightning and thunder all around and, and, and you're just in a bad spot because you've run out of all of your gear. You're, you're basically without any water and you're thirsty as can be. So you're in a cave. You think maybe a little further down that cave, I'll find some water. So you head down into that cave, and you get a little further, and you find some water, and you think, oh, man, this is awesome. I can get something to drink. And so you take a nice big drink. Well, what you didn't realize is that that water actually wasn't so good. There was some bacteria and stuff in there that's not so great, and a couple hours later, you're, you're sick, and you're just in a bad spot. And there you sit for a couple hours, all cleaned out, in a really bad place. Nothing's going so well. And all in that moment, you, you, you feel this like light and you look behind you and you see the entrance to the cave. And the weather has cleared for just a moment and the sun's in there. Let's just pause there for a second. Here's this moment. And in this reality, this moment where you realize just how far you've gotten yourself to way down in a cave somewhere in the bush of, of Idaho, way out in the middle of nowhere. And finally, for the first time in a long time, you turned toward that light that's on your back, and, and finally, in that moment, you, you sense this little tiny bit of hope. In that moment, you actually see things for how they are. Like, oh, this is really where I've gotten myself to. This is really the situation I'm in. We've been talking and kind of comparing every now and then uh, this series to This Is Us series. And there's a clip that kind of reflects what that moment would be like in, in normal everyday life. Take a look. So life happens, right? Sometimes we find ourselves in these moments where we see things as they really are. We see ourselves and where we've gotten ourselves to. And there's something super important to realize here. Like in that cave, you may have turned around and you see the light coming from the entrance, but other than that first step of heading back, your circumstances haven't changed yet. You're still in the cave. You're still deep in the cave and sick, and you still have a long ways to go back before you're in a much safer place, much safer circumstances. And like in that clip, for a moment, they see things as they are. They see really where they're at. But are they actually going to take a step? And then another and another, and another, or will they just stay where they're at? 
Remember that verse, it's Philippians 2, 13. It says, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. If that's life, right? If what those pictures are of life, that, that's what, what our lives are like sometimes. We're, we're all somewhere along that journey. Some of us make the turn earlier than others. Some of us travel even further down into that cave, but, but that doesn't matter. Where you're at when you turn around, it, it doesn't matter at all. You know what matters? You know the thing that actually matters? What, what matters is that once you turn around, you actually take a step in the right direction. And then you take another, and another, and another. And you trust that God will give you the desire, like it says in that verse, or maybe a more fitting for our example is uh, the direction to head. That he'll give you the de- desire and the direction and the power to take each step on the road to following Jesus. God, like that verse says, helps you take those steps. There's an ancient uh, Chinese proverb saying thing that everybody says. You've probably heard it before. And it's got a little bit of truth to it. It says this. It's the journey, uh, the journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step. Have you heard that before? Yes, a bunch of you. Journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step. And it's true. Like, it just makes sense, right? You've got to take a step. And it's actually a good picture of, some, of how it happens sometimes, right? You, you have to have that initial first step in order to have your life change and move in a different direction. It's actually a really good picture of what happens with the people that follow Jesus. There's this time when Jesus healed a blind man, and then it said this happened. It said, instantly, the man could see, and he followed Jesus. There's that first step, right? Praising God, and all who saw it praised God too. It changed things as soon as he began following Jesus. When Jesus called his disciples, this is what happened. <clears throat> Jesus called out to them, come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little farther up the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with their father, Zebedee, repairing their nets, and he called out to them too. They immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. They got up and took a step, and it changed their lives dramatically. When you catch the light that is Jesus... And you turn around and start moving. You take steps. And when you do that, you almost always have to leave something behind. But when you do that, it takes you somewhere, somewhere worth going. <clears throat> now, there's this, this other time. There's this other time where a rich man wanted to know how to enter the kingdom of God. And after going back and forth with Jesus a couple of times, they kind of go back and forth in this discussion, uh, Jesus eventually invites him to sell all that he has, give the money to the poor, and then follow him. Like It's basically the same invitation he had just given to his disciples. Then this happened. This is in Matthew 19, 22. But when the young man heard this, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. A first step is required to travel a thousand miles. But it matters which direction you take that first step in. If you want to follow Jesus, if you want to be a disciple of Jesus, it has to be toward Jesus, not away. Okay. So that's where you're at. If you're here tonight and you're like, I I want to. I want to take a step. I want to keep on taking steps. I want to follow Jesus. What does it even look like? I mean, we just talk about it all the time, like sit and like sing kumbaya, like Adam talked about last weekend and said, like, let's just sit down and sing, sing kumbaya and, and talk about it all the time and, and feel really good about ourselves. No, that's not it. There's got to be more than that, right? There has to be more. A disciple of Jesus knows and they believe and they act in certain ways. So here are some very practical, very straightforward steps you can take this week, and one of these can be for you. Now, starting with no, uh, the first one is, is, I know it sounds silly, but church, like being here is a step. Whether it's for a service on the weekend, or we have midweek that happens, or different community groups, or seminars that are happening, there's this, this reality that when you just show up and you're there for things, you get to hear stuff, and if you do that over a long period of time, you learn a lot. Like you actually learn a whole ton of stuff and you begin to understand better who God is and the direction he wants you to head. So if that's the first step that you can go towards in the no category, that'd be an awesome first step. Just showing up. The second one is to read. 
uh, you can read the Bible. Uh, if you've never read the Bible before, if you've struggled to read the Bible, I would recommend starting in the book of Luke. I don't know why. For me, that's the one that just the most, seems the most thorough, the most interesting uh, for me to read. And so I recommend starting the book of Luke. For me personally, this is my own way of doing it. Uh, and maybe you can model it after this. But for my own personal stuff, I do a lot of reading here, but for my own personal reading, I read one chapter a day. Like that, that's the goal. Maybe sometimes it's more than that. But when it's busy and the kids are up earlier than they're supposed to be and it's all crazy and kooky, one chapter. That's just what I do. And maybe for you, you start with one verse, and that's great. But start with one thing. And just like one a day. One a day. Third thing that you can do is pray. Now, I know this seems weird to be under the category of no, how to know better. But when you're asking what direction you should step in when you're following Jesus, there's nothing better than to pray. And when you pray, it's actually a discussion. It's not just you like asking for things. That's pretty typical how we pray, right? Like, I just want, God, please help me with this. God, do this for me. God, do this for that person. Please. Maybe you throw a please in there, here, there. Uh, but no, like when you pray, it's this opportunity for you to know. God helps you know which direction to take a step. God helps you know what he's doing. God helps you know him better when you spend time with him. And that doesn't have to look fancy. It can be a minute or two in the morning of just quieting down. Try a minute. Like, actually, I dare you. This week, try one minute of like being quiet and trying to listen to God. 60 seconds is a long time. And if you do that, I can't tell you just how much just spending that little bit of time, and it'll grow over time, that'll help you know who God is. The second area we talked about is believe, right? You can believe something. Uh, the first step, there's this guy who was alive in like the 200s or the 300s after Jesus. Um, his name is um, St. Augustine or St. Augustine, depends on how you say it. But he is famous for saying something, uh, first belief, then understanding. So first you believe and then you understand. Sometimes what it takes is for you to be knocked with a bag full of bricks over sideways with what Jesus does for you. Sometimes it just has to hit you so hard over the head that, that you can't ignore it and can't get around it. And sometimes that just happens, right? Where all of a sudden you, you see just so plainly how amazing this gift of Jesus is, of his grace and his forgiveness and his love, and how it actually changes you from the inside out and transforms you, and how that's possible, and how you've been carrying around this weight of what you're supposed to live up to for your whole life, and you realize you don't have to anymore because of what Jesus did, and then what is possible because of the way you live with following him, it, it like knocks you over like a ton of bricks, and that's this opportunity for you to accept this gift. And when you believe that and accept it, there's a pathway to then knowing and understanding it. So sometimes you have to believe before you understand. And if you're here tonight and you want to believe that, this is an amazing first step. And sometimes you just got to take the time to think to yourself, do I actually believe that or not? Do I believe it or not? If you're here tonight, I encourage you to take that step and at least ask yourself that question and find some answers for yourself if you haven't. But once you've accepted that gift, many of us here probably have, and if you've accepted that gift, there's a second part of this. It's the daily part of it. Not only do you accept the gift, but then you have to trust it. Do you trust it? Do you trust that God's plan for your life is actually better than your own? Is that how you live your life? Do you trust Jesus in a daily way, not just in a, like, I'm going to be there on the weekend and, and say I do and think it's fine and then actually go back to my own way? Do you trust that God's plan is better? Because when you do, it, it influences your decisions. It influences how you live your daily life. When you believe that God's way is better, then you live differently. So believe and trust. Accept the gift and trust. And the last thing is, it can't just be a head thing and a heart thing. It has to be a life thing. So you have to act. Act. Which means you, you do stuff, right? You care for people that maybe don't even deserve it. You, you help people when, when they're in need. You, you take care of the people that, that are around you, your neighbors. You love them well. You, you're kind. 
You do those things. In addition to doing things, you say things. You, you uh, use kind words. You're generous to people with that. And you're maybe not offending people in that way. But also, you're sharing your story for how God has, has made an impact on your life. You're talking about your own faith. And it doesn't have to be fancy. We talked about that. If you want to understand that a little bit, talk, look back at the faith stories from the last couple of weeks or talk about how everybody connects. Uh, there's all these ways that we can, we can share our faith, and it's awesome, even the things that you say. And the last thing is probably the hardest of them all in the actions that we do, and that's forgive. So if you are a disciple of Jesus and you're following him, the thing that he does, maybe more than anything else, that we can recognize in our own um, way of living is that he forgives us. He forgives us. And then he says, forgive other people like I forgave you. So if you're looking for a step to take, and you think you got all the other ones covered and you're doing them great, I invite you to take an extra hard look at this one. And what would it look like for you to take the step of forgiving other people? What would that look like in your life? And maybe it's really hard and you balk at the idea. But Jesus asked some hard things and that's what it means to be a disciple. Last weekend at that race, uh, my, our, our youngest son, he's four years old. Um, There's a picture of him up here. Um, he's really cute. Uh, he's also fierce like an animal. Um, I'm not even kidding about that. Um, <laughs> So he found out that he could race, like two weeks ago. And he was so excited. He would wake up every morning and say, essentially, is it race day? Could we have to race today? I can't wait to race. I'm going to win the race. I can't wait. And he's four, and there's this, this kid race there, so it's a mile long. And we get there that day, and uh, I see all the kids that are going to be racing, and he is literally the smallest kid there by far. He's got these little short legs. He's four years old. There are like four total kids that are there and five and under. And like he's one of them. And everybody else is like seven or eight years old or nine years old and are super big and like excited to run. So I'm thinking I'm a good dad. And I, I sit down and I, sit, I chat with Archer and I say, hey, Archer, um, there's some bigger kids that are going to be really fast, okay? And you're going to want, I know who you are, you're going to want to keep up to them, Okay. And then I said, hey, buddy, you know what? I want you to finish the mile. Like, I want you to do the whole thing. Be careful, okay? Try not to keep up with the the fast kids right away because you'll just wear yourself out. And then you'll pace yourself and you'll do really well. I think I'm giving them great advice. I kid you not, my son looks at me, stares me in the eye, and with the coldest, most straightforward voice I've ever heard out of him, he said, no, dad, I'm going to win. I'm going to beat them all. (laughs) Seriously, like, so, so strong, and it was, it was wild. Like, he was, I am going to do this. Now, mind you, he did not win, um, not by a long shot, but he did a whole lot better than I dreamed he would. He, he didn't flake out. He finished the whole race. I was super proud of him. We were super proud of him. He was awesome, but he did something way more than just finish the race. That day, he taught me a big lesson. If you're going to do something, do it. If Archer was going to run, he was going to run to win, which is exactly how we should live our lives, says the Bible. In 1 Corinthians 9.24, it says, don't you realize that in every race, that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. And if that's not clear enough for you, because it's pretty clear, Check out what it says next, because it's even bigger. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. So tonight, my challenge to you is this. Run to win. Run with purpose in every single step. We each have a next step to take. That's why our mission here is to help people take their next step in developing their relationship with God. Everybody, no matter where you're at, you have a next step. What's yours? 
What's yours? What's your one next step that you're going to think about and work on this week? What does it look like? And don't just know what it is. Run that step this week with purpose. Make a plan for how to do it and what it looks like, and then do it. We talked about a whole bunch of different things that you could do. You could start to read a chapter or a verse a day. You could pray. You could be kind to someone this week that you know it's going to be hard to be kind to. You could trust God with your decisions whenever you make a decision rather than your own self. Whatever that step is for you, run it with purpose. Like Archer would say and like what Paul would say. As we finish with this, I'm going to say a prayer and basically just say that ask God to help us do that so that we could follow him with our lives, that we could be disciples of him, that we could do it with each step that we take, starting this week with the specific one that we've all thought of. If you want that for yourself, you can bow your heads and pray with me. Dear God, uh, we are incredibly grateful for you in all the ways that you take care of us and lead us. But God, we know that we have this race before us, this life that we're living And we want to live it as disciples of you. We want to keep on taking steps. We don't just want to walk our way through it and and meander our way through it. We want to decidedly turn towards you and take steps towards you each and every day. Help us to do that. This week, help us to do this specific thing that we're thinking of. Help us to know how to do it, the best way to do it, and then give us the courage and the discipline to do it this week. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.